In studio with the Hall of Famer, Matt Miller. Good morning. Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney Matt Harvey. Good morning. And if you thought the room was full of Matts, <laughs> you were wrong. <laughs> Just like Because there's still more to come. As we welcome in from EPTA, Elaine Bartleson. She's not a Matt. Nope. But Matt Molinex is. Good morning. Happy to join the Matt crew. <laughs> they are three Matt strong here. This yep. is impressive. I don't think it's ever been done before. I don't think it's even been tried before. This is off the charts. Three Matts in a room. Pushing the limits. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you guys could do a little... A little trio, a little singing. <laughs> I don't know if you want to hear. Uh, uh, are, are you guys singers? Are you? No. Oh, definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. No, but he knows musicians. I do know. I do know some musicians. Uh, Martinsburg Band Spectacular this Saturday. Come out. Starts at 5 p.m. Have a great time. And that'll be rain or shine, correct? Because it that'll does look be, like there'll be some be, rain. That'll definitely be rain. rain or shine. Okay. Yeah, it will be glorious one way or the other. Yeah. Do you have anybody in the band? Uh, so my daughter is actually one of the three drum majors. Uh, she's a senior, and then my son is a sophomore. He's in the pit. He plays vibraphone. So, vibraphone, okay. Yeah, he'll be hard to miss. He's the guy that's always dancing while he's playing mm -hmm. down to the pit, so hard <laughs> that's to miss. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you set up the interview we do with Casey Adams. That's correct, yeah. Right, and she directs the band, and she's amazing. Yes, absolutely. No, so I'm, I'm actually, that's my other hat. I'm on the band boosters, and so I'm head of the publicity committee, so that's why, Rob, you hear from me from time to time about some of the things the band are doing, and you've always been a gracious supporter of, of everything that's going on there. Yeah, we're always, we're always looking for interesting people to talk to, so any, the offer goes for anybody out there. You have an interesting person you think would be uh, good for the show, let, them, let me know. We'll, we'll try to put them on if we can, right? EPTA is looking for some people to help with a survey that is out, too. You have several questions here you're going to be asking uh, your, uh, I guess, your ridership, but just the community in general, too, here, Elaine. Correct. So um, this is our time to uh, kick off our transportation development plan for the next five years. We've kind of accelerated this a little bit just because of our construction project and realigning yeah. all the routes. You've got a lot going on. We've got a lot going on. So um, this is very important to us because this is going to give us direction on how we're going to um, grow or um, realign some things that maybe were relevant five, ten years ago but mm -hmm. aren't now because we've grown so much in Berkeley and Jefferson County. How are you getting these questions out to people and who, who can fill them out? So Matt's done a great job emailing them out to all the counties and any email address he has, but we've also sent it to the chambers to send out a chamber blast. Um, we're going to put a link on our website. Matt's got a link on his. Mm -hmm. Did I forget anything? Yeah. Uh, and then Elaine's working on getting hard copies for yep. all oh, the, for the bus riders. So yep. if you ride one of the fixed routes, you'll, mm -hmm. you'll have a chance to get the service. So we're going to try to have some staff ride to help. And, and if there is a, um, a need for um, some um, translation, maybe Spanish, that we do have somebody in the office that will help fill that application or the survey out. There are 30 questions on this survey. There's a QR code too. Uh, so I, I suppose if you scan that, you, it will take you to like an electronic version of this. Correct. You don't have to. If yeah. you fill this out in paper form, what do you do with it after you fill it out in paper form? You can give it to a bus driver or send it into us or call us and we'll come pick it up. So. You will actually come to my house and pick this I, up? I that will. I will say. drive all I the way. I, don't live close. <laughs> I, I know where you live. Or not where you live. Close yeah. to where you was live. Was that you the other night? There was yeah. out there in the woods? <laughs> Elaine, was that with you? Yeah. I got to get some drinks. I pass through Maryland quite a bit lately. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I do regularly as well. So 30 questions. Who helped you develop the questions? Or is there like a stock survey for commuter companies that they go through? Yeah, so um, we're our, we have a consultant firm uh, that's working with us. It's Foursquare as well as Michael Baker that help us put the survey together. And so, as Elaine said, we're trying to find out what the riders and members of the community like, what they don't like, where there's areas maybe where we can have operational improvements, where service could be expanded, or maybe we need to change frequency of routes based on uh, ridership uh, behavior changes. Um, so EPTA has over a quarter of a million riders every year. And so, as Elaine mentioned, with the population growth, with the new transit center project downtown, um, we just see that there's, there's just opportunities to look for ways to improve um, because so many things are already changing. Right. How many of those are unique riders? Well, we'll tough, have an update. One, once sure. the survey is complete, we should have an updated number. But right. <laughs> a, a guess or an estimate of those 250,000 annual riders, are there 20,000 I mean, unique? You know, I, I don't know that we know that, but we have, you know, we have commuters going to D.C., Baltimore. Mm -hmm. We, you know, we have riders that ride to work. We have riders going to medical appointments. We have riders go shopping. You know, 
go to the library, go meet with their friends. So across the board, you know, it's pretty, you know, spread out. Are and you still tied in with the Mark train? We are. We're still going to Brunswick to pick passengers up in the afternoon for two two of the buses. Do you know what kind of count that is? Um, you know, it depends on the day. Mm -hmm. You know, not everyone has gone back to work. A lot of people are still working at home. So, um, you know, on a one of the busier days, maybe 30 people between the two. It's not a lot. Mm hmm Okay, and and how much? How about the Shepherd uh, College or I guess University? Shepherd University. Oh, you know yeah. we're still there, and and we work closely with Shepherd to keep those buses running and and them full. So, mm -hmm. what, what, what hours do the buses run? Oh, I, I, all the routes. Period. So we start our first route goes out at starts at five a.m. But our buses, our first driver comes in at four. Mm -hmm. So um, they start five in the morning to 8.40 at night are routes, and then Shepard and Mark come in up closer to 10.30. Do any public school kids ride the EPTA bus? So um, I don't know if public school, but we do serve St. Joe's and Faith Christian. So they do ride the bus from that perspective. Mm -hmm. All right, very good. What's it cost to ride the bus? Well, uh, if you were going to ride, and I'm assuming you're going to be under 60, Rob, that it's No, true. actually, I'm 61 now. <laughs> I, I, shouldn't I have a senior discount? Depends well, on what he'll tell you the age when he hears the discount. You, you blew it. You should have just went with it. So if you are under 60, it costs 2 to $3.50, depending on where you're going per um, boarding. Mm -hmm. And then if you're over 60, it goes from a dollar to a dollar 75. So if you're staying in Martinsburg or downtown Jefferson, you know, uh, Charlestown, it's $2 to ride. If you're under 60, if you're 60 and older, it's a dollar. So Miller and Harvey still pay the full boat. I yeah. get <laughs> We're making up for you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate so, it. <laughs> but, you know, we have so many rider programs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we offer a get a job, get a ride. So if somebody who hasn't used the program before can um, go to their employer and say, listen, I'm going to have a month's worth of transportation at no cost so I can get to, to work. Um, we, we absolutely support that back to work program or helping people get to work. Mm -hmm. um, and with that, you know, if you don't live off the bus route, all our buses have bike racks, so you can pedal to the bus stop. Oh, yeah, I saw that the oh, other cool. day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it on the front? It is. I saw one riding around with a bicycle on the front. I thought maybe the guy hit the guy and didn't know he hit a bike rider. <laughs> well, sometimes it's easier to ride to the bus stop yeah. and then put your bus on or your bike on and, and go to your or whatever your destination is. So we encourage that. That's I mean, smart. our bike racks are way busier than I thought. And at some point a few years ago, um, West Virginia DOT asked me for an estimate and I underestimated. We actually work with um, Passio to do our passenger counting. So we added a bike uh, button to the, when the drivers put it on. So um, it's very, it's high. A lot of people use those bike racks. When do you hope That's to awesome. have the final survey counted and then the information available to you so the data can be examined? Yeah, so the public survey is out right now. Uh, it will close November 1st. Uh, we will have a uh, series of public meetings once we have the results finalized as well as some of the draft analysis, uh, the market analysis, operational analysis, service analysis. Uh, we'll have a public meeting both in Berkeley and Jefferson counties um, probably in the spring I believe mm -hmm. uh, or, or late winter. Mr. Miller. You mentioned the Get a Job, Get a Ride program. Do you work with some of the larger uh, corporations here within the county? So once a, a company comes to us and signs an agreement, which is just saying that they're going to submit these applications to us and notify us if they don't no longer work there, because we do track it. It's a one and done program for they can't just keep moving from job to job and okay. keep riding for free. But um, once they're a corporate partner, it's done. I don't care whether you're a small pizza shop or you're Macy's or Quad FedEx. You know, we will work with anyone who owns a business who wants to help their employees stick to work. And they just simply need to reach out. It's on the applications on our website. They can fill out the corporate one, send it in, send in the application for their employee, and they will get 20 round trips. 20 round trips. Yep. Nice. As far as a, finding a month or no, total? For, total for the program so okay. that will get them one month of transportation ah, to get for a full time if it's part time it'll last them a little bit longer right, right. so we don't care whether it's full time part time we are our, our goal is to introduce people to public transit and to help people get to work so what about re rehab facilities uh, day reports so are you do you have I'm sure you have a route there so we do and um, we also 
participate in the state opioid response grant program. So if a um, counselor or you know medical professional refer somebody to treatment or um, counseling um, they just need to let us know and we will pick them up and we'll invoice the grant so it doesn't cost them anything to get to their appointments and that's the, often the first obstacle to recovery is yeah. transportation yep and if they don't have one you know call us and we'll help steer, steer them somewhere but um we actually get calls, we take calls on the weekend from uh, CSRC or from the hospital to take them over there to intake. Mm -hmm. We do it seven days a week from, on the weekends we try to do it between eight and seven. We try not to go late at night, but if we have a bus out there that can pick somebody up and get them, um, we'll do it as late as like 10 o'clock at night. When I hear this, it sounds like, you know, it could be a varying number of riders. So what type of vehicles do you have that you can offer? Are, are you vans, cars, buses, the whole gamut? So we have minivans and uh, a couple transit vans for our non-emergency medical transportation. We have 12 passenger buses, 18, 26, and 28 passenger buses. And all of them are ADA and they have lifts. Um, so. We can, we can take anybody. Nobody in a stretcher, though. We don't do stretcher transportation, but um, there are other resources for that around. Has that actually been requested? Several times. So how, how does how does that work? How would somebody in a stretcher ask well, for we transportation? Well, can't, we can't. They're, maybe they're going from uh, an intake facility to a doctor's appointment or to the hot from the hospital home. It, it varies. Oh, I see. Yeah. I'm thinking someone's been in an accident. We just don't, our vehicles don't have that capability. Sure. Yeah, yeah. nor should they. It's a yeah. public transportation vehicle. Right. Uh, so, uh, David Anderson, uh, I think it was him on our Facebook comment section, asked about Spring Mills routes. So that's one of the things. So right now we are going up there for demand response and NEMT to go to the, you know, the medical facilities up there. All this medical stuff has gone up there with Berkeley, you know, Berkeley County or Berkeley Medical Center and Valley Health. Mm -hmm. So we are going up there, which was not really part of our service area um, a few years ago. Um, I don't know. This is that's why we have this survey out. Um, we know there's a need to have a, a route up there. We just don't know how that looks like mm -hmm. and if it's really. Um, the return on our investment for the cost that it would do to operate that route up there right. is it is it in our best interest so are we just going to continue doing the demand response and non-emergency medical transportation to spring mills or are we gonna go beyond that where track? is your busiest area now wow. probably 14 yeah so probably the Walmart um, you know you've got route 20 in jefferson county which is extremely busy which goes from the save a lot to harbors ferry so you've got martins and walmart and all that going on down there we also have route 14 that goes from the uh, caperton train station to walmart to target um, to gabe's and kind of makes that circle around mm -hmm. um, but Gabe, so we have all these transfer points. So they also, Gabe's will transfer to Route 11, which will take you to the VA, which will get you down to Jefferson County. So um, they're all fairly busy. Um, Route 18, which serves Inwood, is probably my lowest ridership. But at certain times of the day when you're going to the workforce, um, that's high. You know, so we have periods of time during the day when it's, it, people ride and then there's, you know, do you Crickets. do? Do you do special appointment buses? So if I wanted to reserve a bus to take us all to Camden Yards for a baseball game, do you do no, that sort of thing? That, that's considered charter, and so we would have to. Um, the Federal Transit Administration has a, a spot on their website for registered charters, and we have like. Uh, 300 registered charter companies in our service area, which wow. means if I were going to try to do something like that, I would have to get. 300 responses that they are not interested in that work and i don't have the people or just yeah that's yeah. enough yeah <laughs> enough said there i want to go over some of the questions if okay. that's okay right okay. so as you look at the survey what is your total household income in a year what, what, what do you need that information for so it really tells us a, a little bit about the dynamics of our ridership of course mm -hmm. we do have those people that are commuting you know to baltimore dc frederick wherever they're going to work. So of course their income is gonna be a slightly higher. And then um, 
it just helps us determine where yeah. we're going to go. We, we have what we would call consider captive riders, right? Mm -hmm. They, because of their income levels, they may not have a choice for transportation other than relying on public transit for great distances. So, so, so the, this would help you determine, you know, these people don't have too many options. We better make sure we have a system mm -hmm. there of some sort. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, what is your race, ethnicity? Uh, how well do you speak English? Uh, what is the primary language spoken at home? Mm -hmm. uh, does this have to do with communication on the bus, or how you get the message out? So it's also a requirement, because we have to have an LEP program, a limited English proficiency program in our agency. So it also helps us determine the percentage of riders that are, are of mm -hmm. that. Okay. So as well as Title VI, mm -hmm. uh, the Civil Rights Act, there's certain federal requirements for um, making sure that no one is excluded from being able to participate in publicly offered or, or taxpayer funded public transit. So this keeps the federal funds flowing basically. Right. What, <laughs> what, what route were you on when you received this survey? I suppose that could help you determine how many routes are busy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, how did you get to this bus? This is a pretty interesting one too because this gives you an idea how long people have to travel just to get to the bus station. As well as the, the network, the transportation network around the community that leads to that bus stop. So there's actually, uh, you probably saw that, that there's a, a uh, notice of public comment on it, on looking at ways to improve bus stop access um, for folks that are in wheelchairs or pedestrians mm -hmm. because some bus stops, so you mentioned like the Day Report Center, there's a bus right. stop right there on the corner of South and Raleigh. Very visible, easy to get to, sidewalks everywhere, uh, but there are some like you mentioned Inwood, you know, at the, the sheets or the mega apartments, you know, you're kind of, I don't want to say it's like uh, you know, North by Northwest where, you know, he gets off the bus and he's in the middle of a cornfield. But, um, you know, that could yeah. be a, a stop that's difficult to access. So so we just want to better understand how are folks able to get to the bus stops um, that, that exist right now. And if some of those need to be moved to better accommodate folks. A reference in some classic movies there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nicely done. Uh, so your options are walked, bike, drove car, dropped off in car, another bus or train, for instance. If you transferred to this bus from another route, please list it. If you walked to reach this bus, how long was your walk? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, what stop did you get off or will get off at? I presume this would be for someone who's actually on the bus then. Uh, please list your final destination. Heaven? I mean, I don't, I'm not sure just yet. <laughs> I'm hoping it's heaven. So yeah. I'm not... After leaving this bus, how Maybe will you a little less existential. <laughs> uh, <laughs> After leaving this bus, how will you complete your trip to your final destination? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, I, I don't know. Uh, if you take another bus after this bus to reach your final destination, please list it here. If you will walk from this bus to your final destination, how long will you, your walk take? In minutes. How did you pay your fare for this trip? What are my options, by the way, on the bus? So cash. Um, we have a mobile ticketing app or um, people buy paper tickets ahead of time we have an all-day pass you know they Month have a punch card monthly pass yep. right uh, how did you pay to board this bus are you eligible for the half fare discount 60 and over yes <laughs> <laughs> are you checking as you go you should be you're I'm, I'm, I mean you're I'm, reading the questions you're gonna have to work I right expect now you to fill all those <laughs> uh, <yeah. out. laughs> how long have you been riding up to service how long have you folks been around since 1976, and we're approaching our 50th anniversary. 50th anniversary. Wow. Yeah, that's cool. Wow. How many one-way trips do you make each week? So how would that work? Someone else picks you up and brings you home or something, mm -hmm. I guess, right? Well, it would be, you know, Mark Train, because they're taking the train out in the mm -hmm. morning and the afternoon. We're bringing them back to either Jefferson County or Berkeley County. Some people get dropped off um, at FedEx because their shift starts in the middle of the night, and we pick them up when they get off. Okay. Or a student at Shepherd who parks yeah. on one side, goes to the other on the bus, and then just decides to walk back. Okay. What is the purpose of this trip today? School, work, shopping, personal, medical, dental, social, recreation. Compared to a year ago, EPTA service is A, getting better, B, staying about the same, C, getting worse. You have to be a little nervous when you throw that one out no, there. Well, <laughs> can't, can't shy no, away from it, though. No, right? and actually... It, that's right. It's a good question. I mean, we that's what we want to know. Are we, you know, we we're struggling with drivers right now, so we've had some suspended routes which mm -hmm. I, I'm assuming will impact that question. Um, we, we try very diligently to keep our driver status up. Um, not easy though. No, it is not. Yeah. Uh, have you been able to enhance salaries uh, since we last spoke to be able to compete with those in the area who are hiring truck drivers? 
So we're getting ready to do some increases. Oh, so. you're smiling big on this one. <laughs> so the staff doesn't know it. Thanks for thanks for bringing it up. <laughs> Just call me Santa Claus. Just call me Santa Claus. So, but we've done some other things in the last year that was part of their benefit package. We gave them another floater holiday mm -hmm. um, to their days off already, which you know. Day off, days off to recharge themselves as, as public transit drivers it's important. is important. Yeah. Speaking of recharge, do you have any electric vehicles in your fleet? We do not, but I, I did. Um, we service. Um, we actually operate the shuttle service for Harpers Ferry National Park, and um, the mm. park and I, um, I didn't realize partnered that. together. Yeah, so my drivers, my mechanic down there, their buses. But I did help um, the uh National Park Service and EPTA partnered together, and we went out and got a grant for some electric buses down there. So that will be my first foray into it. Um, our new building project will be um, planned for electric. Um, so, but right now, that's a lot of uh, financial responsibility. Electric buses are close to a million dollars. That's wow. That's not doable unless it's, it's subsidized somehow. Well, <clears throat> you can go after competitive grants um, through the Federal Transit Administration or <laughs> FHWA. Um, they have them, but I, I would have to come up with a 20% local match. So if it's a million dollar bus, I still got to come up with $200,000. Right. So that I was asking because I was curious about their, their performance and their and how well they held up and if it was a savings with the electricity versus the gas. So we, um, Lewis Grindel, who's my deputy director, we were just at a conference with CTAA, which is the Community Transportation Association of America, and they did a panel with people who had electric buses, hybrid buses, propane buses, gas buses, yeah, and I'm probably CNG, missing CNG. Maybe, or yeah, so they all had their opinion and um, that worked for them. Mm -hmm. So it was a, a really interesting conversation that we had, that we were part part of for that. Um, I do think the state of West Virginia is going after um, hydrogen. hydrogen. Yes. Thank you very much. That was yeah. one of the other ones I forgot. Yeah. So I know there's um, Potomac Valley Transit Authority um, in Petersburg is probably that's who they're working with for this hydrogen project. So um, if hydrogen is the way that the state's going, then we'll probably follow. But um, we're going to let Potomac Valley do that work for us. Propane? Hydrogen. But but the, but you said they have propane buses? They do. They do. Yeah, that sounds like something you'd buy down at Orsini's. I like got a Traeger so. bus. Get another <laughs> smoke, a, smoke a turkey. That yeah. would make for a very nicely smelling yeah. bus. Yeah. So uh, Mountain Line in Morgantown, she has gone um, a couple buses pro propane, and she plans on doing her fleet that way. Wow. Transitioning. Wow. Interesting. If you said an electric bus cost a million, what's a regular gasoline-powered bus cost? So we just got three new buses, and they were uh, um, around 260000 each. It doesn't seem like the million-dollar bus would pay for itself in savings of no, fuel. No, it's a, it's well, Yeah, <laughs> it's that doesn't not, sound like it's, it's worth it, <laughs> right? That's a lot up front to not get it back quickly enough. The bus would have to last right. 50 years. Yeah. Right. Hey, uh, again, where can you find these surveys, Elaine? Um, on our website, on Matt's website, yep. through the Chamber Blast, um, and we'll have them at the library in both counties and on our buses. But can we just talk about our facility real quick? Oh, you have like 20 seconds, okay. I'm sorry. So we are um, demoing uh, Berkeley Glass right now on the property, mm -hmm. but one of the things that's actually coming up very quickly is that unnamed alley, which we are going to be bringing up to code mm -hmm. um, and paving, will um, have limited access very soon, and we are going to to be sending out notices and um, we're going to use this as an opportunity to let the community know that um, there will be no access on that alley in the okay. very near future. Thank you, Elaine. Yep. Matt, good to yep. see you. Yep, always a pleasure. Thank you all. Nine o'clock. This is Talk Radio, WNR Martinsburg and TV 10. Back with more after these.